We've had a long and complicated history with Apple's MacBook Pro with Retina display. When I say complicated, I mean I'm torn by being impressed by the technology, but also disappointed by the environmental impact. It's virtually impossible to fix or upgrade, which forced us to give the original MacBook Pro Retina we faced a one out of 10 on the repairability scale. On Tuesday, Apple had a lot to say about the low environmental impact of this machine, citing everything from its EP Gold rating to its arsenic-free glass. But we see things very differently from Apple. And if you'd like to know why, we wrote a great article on the subject that's on Wired, and we'll put a link in the description below. Have things changed in the updated version? Well, there's only one way we know to find out, and that's to tear it down. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're tearing down the 13-inch MacBook Pro with Retina display. On the surface, not much has changed, and the model looks pretty identical to the early 2013 versions. The 13-inch MacBook Pro Retina comes in at 1.8 centimeters thick, which is a bit thinner than the previous versions, 31.4 centimeters across, 21.9 centimeters in depth, and weighs in at 1.57 kilograms. The display is a 13.3-inch LED Retina display with a resolution of 2560 by 16 and a pixel density of 227 pixels per inch. Before we open up this little guy, we notice the all new model number, and we're hoping that's a sign of new and interesting things to come. And just as we thought, the first thing we see when we get inside is that Apple has pared down on the cooling from two fans to only one. And where there used to be a fan, there's a removable SSD. Looks like Apple's been doing a little redecorating in here. With just a twist of our spudger, we disconnect the airport antenna cables and remove the airport card. Looks like we've got another upgrade here. This card is capable of 802.11ac, which is three times faster than the wireless end card found in the early 2013 version of this machine. Now onto the piece that's hogging all the room, the battery. While it's not a shocker, it's always a disappointment when batteries are adhered to the rear case. And the 13-inch MacBook Pro Retina's battery is no exception. So we turn to our trusty eye opener and one of our handy prying cards for some support. And after some heat and careful scraping, it's out. This battery is a slightly smaller battery from the previous generation, which was a 74 watt hour battery. This one is a 71.8 watt hour, 6,330 milliamp hour battery. But even with that slight decrease in watt hours, Apple is claiming that you'll be getting an additional two hours of battery life out of it. Now that we covered the heart, let's talk about the brains. The brains! The brains! Sorry, I'm just really excited about Halloween. <clears throat> The logic board is decked out with the latest generation dual core Intel Core i5 or i7 CPUs and an integrated Intel Iris graphics processor. We've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything, so we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between 1 and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and 1 being the most difficult. The 13 inch MacBook Pro with Retina display got a 1 out of 10. And here's why. The battery is even worse than the previous model. Now it's more like the 15 inch and nearly impossible to remove without damaging either the battery or the upper case. Also below the battery is a trackpad plate that is adhered to the top case. This complicates things even further if you ever need to replace your trackpad. The display assembly is almost impossible to take apart. So if anything ever fails inside the display, you'll need to replace the display as a whole. Proprietary pentalobe screws continue to make opening the device a chore. The RAM is soldered to the logic board following the lead of the MacBook Air. And finally, the proprietary SSD is now in PCIe format, but still isn't a standard drive. Cross your fingers for future compatible drives. For now, you're stuck with what you've got. With a score that low, it's important to know that Apple is phasing out their upgradable and repairable machines. There's no longer an option for a non-Retina 15-inch MacBook Pro, and it's pretty clear that's the direction Apple wants to go with the 13-inch model as well. So take your last look at the non-Retina 13-inch MacBook Pro, as it's likely the last time you're going to see it. For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful high quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.